Let's welcome in our next guest, Vikas Sethi is uh, now joining us. Vikas, uh, let's start uh, with uh, Tata Motors. It's been the stock of the day. Uh, what is the sense that you get? Do you think uh, Tata Motors qualify as a buy? Is it overdone or you would wait? Yeah, Pankaj, uh, the kind of results which uh, Tata Motors had declared yesterday, they were simply pathetic. Nobody expected such kind of results and more particularly the margins were pretty bad. So the stock has reacted, but I think uh, over the past few days, uh, past two days, ever since the results were declared, uh, the stock has tanked by close to 15, 16%. So I think from here on, uh, we should not see a major fall and I think risk reward would be favorable at these levels. So I would uh, advise investors to look at Tata Motors from a buying point of view, although that has to be done in a staggered way. I do not mean to say that it cannot go further down to levels of around 425, 430, but then that should be a good level to buy into the stock. And I think uh, with time saying that if one has a positional view, then we could again see levels of 475, 480 on Tata Motors in say 15, 20 days. Right, but uh, you know, how should one look at the name right now? Should one focus on DVR buying if it's a retail investor or should one focus on the main share? No, I think uh, I would normally be with the main Tata Motors share, although both of them would be linked. So if you wanted to buy Tata Motors, you could might as well uh, buy into Tata Motors DVR and they would both be uh, doing the same kind of stuff. So uh, I think uh, as far as I'm concerned, I would be buying into Tata Motors if it comes down to levels of say, 425, 430. Actually, to be uh, say, to, uh, I would mean to say that even at the current levels, one could start buying. If one has an appetite to buy, say, five lots in FNO, one could certainly buy one or two lots at these levels and then wait for further correction to add some more. DLF did not declare its deal. Was that the key disappointment and why the stock is down 6%? Uh, yeah, actually, first, the results were not great. They were on expected lines, but the major disappointment was uh, as far as the deal of their rental asset uh, was concerned. Uh, we were expecting or the markets were expecting that there would be something positive as far as that uh, uh, cyber city rental deal would be concerned. But then they had uh, uh, asked for a time ex extension of about a year, so which, thing, which uh, gives an impression that uh, this deal would be further delayed. So that was the reason why the stock is tanking and it had actually run up over the past few days after the demonetization thing. It had come down to levels of 105 odd and then from there it had seen a sharp rally to 150. So the results were disappointing and the, the deal was not happening. So that has led to the kind of carnage which we are witnessing today. Right. Uh, what do you do with Sun Pharma? Sun Pharma is also down. It's down about 3%. Any view on that name? Again, it's reacting to numbers. Uh, yeah, true. The numbers again were disappointing, but uh, I think Sun Pharma, if one has a long term point of view, could be looked at at these levels. The stock is beaten down today, and I think these levels would present a very good opportunity for long term investors to buy into this stock. You clearly need to be having a horizon of at least one, one and a half years, and then Sun Pharma at these levels, it might go down, it might, uh, you might lose another 5-10% on the stock, but then this is the, you can't ever pick the bottom, so this is the good stage or a good uh, price to get into Sun Pharma from a long-term point of view. I think one should be uh, advised to buy into the stock at the current levels. Right. Uh, in terms of uh, any other large cap names, anything that you can identify opportunity in, a lot of stocks are down today. Any names that you like from the large cap ones, then we let's talk about the mid cap names as well. Uh, yeah, Pankaj, actually, in the kind of carnage which we are witnessing, there are a few pockets of strength and I would like to be with them. LIC Housing Finance comes to my mind. Housing Finance as a sector looks good. The stock has also corrected uh, since uh, from its recent highs. So at the current levels, LIC Housing Finance looks good. Then even a power grid which declared decent set of numbers, but then is uh, seeing some correction because of the nervousness in the market is presenting a good, good opportunity. And the third stock which would come to my mind would be an Ashok Leland. Uh, this stock also looks good. Uh, after the uh, fall which we have witnessed, I think the stock is showing some kind of strength today. And uh, I think from a trading point of view also, uh, one could uh, look at Ashok Leland. And whenever the market recovers, this stock is going to uh, recover sharply, I suppose. Do you also look at L&T Finance? It's a stock which has done very well. A lot of funds in the month of December has bought. That's that what we can pick up from uh, uh, you know, the mutual fund data that we get. Uh, yeah, this stock is a good stock from a long-term point of view. I've always been recommending this stock to, uh, say, uh, on various TV channels whenever I've been there. Uh, the stock looks good, although it has 
it's gone up from 90 odd levels to the current levels of 110 but i think if one has uh, one one two two years horizon then this stock certainly would give substantial upside from the current levels the company is doing well they've shifted their focus they've done some management changes the results also have been good so i am bullish on lnd finance from a long term point of view so any correction in the stock would offer a buying opportunity uh, DMART is coming up with the IPO in the month of March. Do you think names like Vmart Retail, Future Retail, because of the valuation that uh, the street is looking for DMART, you know, they, could, they could just do well, something that we've seen with Jet and SpiceJet before Interglobe Aviation results came? Uh, yeah, Pankaj, uh, as far as uh, DMART's IPO is concerned, it is coming at a market cap of close to 19,000 crores and with the kind of premium, grey market premium, which is being heard of, the... Uh, the valuation uh, at the time of listing could be somewhere closer to 25,000 crores. So if you compare that with uh, future retail, which uh, has a market cap of just about 10,000 crores, so they pretty much look cheap at the current level. So there should be some buying interest in future retails. And even in uh, CESC, which has Spencer's uh, retail under it, and which they are likely to demerge, could lead to some value unlocking. So an indirect play on retail would be even a CESC, which is also planning to demerge its transmission distribution business. So these are the kind of themes which one could look at if one wants to play on the uh, say response to the DMART IPO. Right, but all of that could be very short-lived because you know that company is coming with that market cap but I was just looking at the same store sales growth of the, of the company, the model that it operates, it's completely different from what a future retail does. Uh, so it could be a near-term gain but uh, again one has to be uh, cautious that uh, you know it's, it, it can just be a tactical idea. Uh, yeah, true, but then uh, as far as the valuations are concerned, there is too much of a difference and this kind of a difference cannot be warranted. I do not mean to say that we could give same kind of valuations to a future retail, but then uh, future retail trading at a market cap of 10,000 crores and DMART quoting at a market cap of 25,000 crores would be too much of a, a discrimination. And so I think some catching up would be happening and that is the reason why I recommend uh, future retail to be bought at the current levels. Right. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, some other names, uh, what would be your call on, uh, say, HPCL, BPCL? These two names have fallen quite a bit. Any view on these names? Uh, as far as HPCL and BPCL are concerned, they have seen stellar run over the past few months uh, on expectations of a good set of numbers. So the numbers, clearly, they have been good, but they were below market estimates. So we are seeing the kind of correction which we are right now witnessing. So any further uh, correction, these stocks would present a buying opportunity. I think crude is not going to go up uh, and uh, with the kind of uh, steps which the government has taken, these companies have become pretty strong. So I think uh, one would do well to buy into the stock if they correct another, say, 5 to 7 percent from the current levels. Right, but uh, the structural long-term story continues? Uh, I would think so. Uh, the entire, actually, the quality of their balance sheet has improved and uh, say crude also, in my opinion, may not be, uh, say it might certainly go up to levels of $60, but then I do not see anything much more than that. So as long as that is there, I think oil marketing com companies could do well. And furthermore, the government also plans to extract a hefty dividends out of these companies, which would be a positive trigger. Then there are talks of uh, even consolidation in the space. That could also lead to some activity in these kind of uh, stocks. So I think uh, one should be looking at buying opportunities on declines. Uh, that's as far as uh, oil marketing companies are concerned. How would you look at the oil producers, ONGC, Reliance? Do any of them warrant for a buy? Uh, over the past, say, two or three trading sessions, if you look at them, uh, all of these stocks, be it an ONGC or an Oil India Limited or a Reliance, they've been doing well. So I think uh, these kind of stocks also could be look at, looked at. So uh, even ONGC at the current levels of 195 looks good. Even Reliance has been doing well. So I think there are, uh, there's some more upside left in these stocks. So uh, one could buy into these stocks as well. Right. And the gas companies? So oil and gas, uh, yeah, the entire sector is doing well. The results which have been declared by gas companies like a Gale or a Petronet LNG or an IGL have been simply impressive. So I think these uh, companies look good from a long-term point of view. So in the kind of correction which we are seeing in the markets today, if uh, they've also fallen or they've also come down from their recent highs, they would be good buys at the current levels. 
Right, but you know, what is the call over there, at least in these gas names? Do you think that volumes would tend to grow and that's the key call that market is taking? Uh, that is also there. So as far as IGL and MGL is concerned, mm -hmm. they, the kind of cities they are operating in, they are seeing good uh, kind of demand and then uh, they would need to spread into uh, other cities. There is tremendous opportunity out there. So IGL and MGL both good from the gas space. Uh, I would uh, recommend buys on these two stocks. Right. Uh, in terms of CESE, you were talking about demerger. How would a demerger help CESE? Or you were saying that once the demerger happens, one should look at Spencer. Uh, no, as far as CESE is concerned, first, their results for this quarter were good. And then they are planning to demerge even their distribution and transmission business. So which could lead to significant value unlocking with the kind of uh, valuations at which uh, distribution transmission companies are trading at. We could see some value unlocking and even the retail business which is uh, right now a drag, and uh, but then uh, uh, the, once it is demerged, I think uh, that could lead to some value unlocking with the kind of response which we are witnessing for the IP of uh, DMART. So I think all in all, a uh, demerger, if as and when it happens, it could lead to a spike in the stock. Vikas, thank you so much for taking out time for us. Always good to get a perspective from you.